Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Long ago, in the year 1300-something, there was a lady named the Countess of Roussillon. She lived in a big house near a place called the Pyrenees and wasn't very happy. Her husband had passed away, and her son Bertram had been asked to go to Paris, which was very far away. Bertram was a handsome young man with curly hair, nice eyebrows, and sharp eyes. He was quite proud and would sometimes tell lies to get what he wanted. But he was still a good-looking young man, and Helena was in love with him. Helena's father was a famous doctor who had worked for the Count of Roussillon before he died. The only thing she had left from her father was a few of his medical recipes. When Bertram left for Paris, the Countess noticed that Helena looked very sad. The Countess told Helena that she cared about her just like she cared about her own child. This made Helena cry because she felt like the Countess saw Bertram as a brother and not someone she could marry. The Countess figured out Helena's secret and Helena admitted that Bertram was as important to her as the sun is to the day. Helena hoped to make the King of France, who was sick and couldn't walk well, feel better and, in return, win Bertram's love. The important doctors in Paris couldn't help the king, but Helena believed in a medicine her father had used successfully. She said goodbye to the countess and went to Paris. She got a chance to meet the king. He was polite but thought Helena was just a regular girl and couldn't help him. I can't let a young girl like you treat me when the smart doctors can't, he said. Helena replied, sometimes even simple people can do great things and promise to make him better even if it cost her life. The king asked, what if you make me better? Helena replied, then I'll ask your majesty to let me marry the man I love. The king agreed, and Helena became the king's doctor. In just two days, the king was able to walk again. He called his friends and had a big party in his palace. Helena saw many handsome young men, but she only had eyes for Bertram. She walked up to him and said, I can't say I'm taking you, but I am yours. She said it loud enough for the king to hear and added, This is the man. The king said, Bertram, she's your wife now. My wife, your majesty, said Bertram. I'd like to choose my own wife, if you don't mind. The king, who had treated Bertram like a son, asked, Do you know what she has done for your king? Yes, your majesty, replied Bertram. But why should I marry a girl who only got her upbringing because my dad was kind to her? You're rejecting her because she doesn't have a fancy title, but I can give her one, said the king. Then he looked at Bertram with a thoughtful expression and added, It's strange that you care so much about noble blood when you couldn't tell the difference between your own blood and a poor person's if they were mixed together in a bowl. I can't love her, Bertram insisted. Helena gently replied, Please don't force him, your majesty. I'm happy to have cured you for the sake of our country. My honor demands that this stubborn boy obeys, declared the king. Bertram, you have to make up your mind. You're going to marry this lady even though you don't think you're worthy of her or you'll see how a king can be angry. What's your answer? Bertram bowed low and said, Your majesty has made the lady noble with your interest in her. I agree. Take her hand, said the king, and tell her she's your wife. Bertram followed the king's command, 
and before long, he was married to Helena. However, fear of the king couldn't make Bertram love Helena. Mockery from others also made him bitter. A rude soldier named Peroles told him to his face that now that he had a kiki-wiki, which means a wife, his job was not to fight but to stay at home. Kiki-wiki was just a silly word for a wife, but it made Bertram feel like he couldn't stand having a wife, so he decided to go to war in Italy even though the king had forbidden him. Bertram told Helena to say goodbye to the king and go back to Roussillon. He gave her letters for his mother and herself and then left, saying a cold farewell. Helena opened the letter addressed to herself and read, You can call me your husband when you can get the ring from my finger, but I write never against that when. Helena had not shed a tear when she said goodbye to the king, but the king was worried about her and gave her a ring from his own finger, saying, If you send this to me, I will know you need help. She didn't show the king the letters that Bertram gave her, as it would have made him want to punish Bertram. Instead, she went back to Roussillon and gave her mother-in-law the second letter. It was short and bitter. I've run away, it said. I'll be far away from her as long as the world is big enough. Cheer up the noble widow said to the abandoned wife. I'm erasing his name from my family, and you're the only one I consider my child. The dowager countess, however, still cared for Bertram enough to blame his behavior on paroles, whom she called a very bad guy. Helena didn't stay in Roussillon for long. She dressed as a pilgrim and, leaving a letter for her mother-in-law, secretly headed to Florence. When she arrived in Florence, she asked a woman for directions to the pilgrim's house of rest, but the woman kindly offered to host the holy pilgrim herself. Helena soon discovered that her hostess was a widow with a beautiful daughter named Diana. When Diana found out that Helena was from France, she mentioned, A man from your country, Count Roussillon, has done some good deeds for Florence. But soon, Diana had some not-so-nice news to share about Helena's husband. Bertram was trying to romance Diana. He didn't hide the fact that he was married but Diana heard from paroles that Bertram thought his wife wasn't worth caring about. The widow was worried for Diana's sake, and Helena decided to reveal her true identity as the Countess of Roussillon. He keeps asking for a lock of Diana's hair, the widow told Helena. Helena sadly smiled because her hair was just as lovely as Diana's, and it was the same color. Then, she had an idea. She said, here's a bag of gold for you. I'll give Diana 3,000 coins if she helps me with this plan. Diana should promise to give my husband a lock of her hair in exchange for the ring he's wearing. It's a family ring that five counts of Roussillon have worn. He'll give it up for a lock of your daughter's hair. When Bertram will give the ring from his finger, Diana will also give him a ring that I will give her. Diana should insist that he cuts her hair in a dark room, and they should agree that she won't speak a word during this. The widow thought about it, with the bag of gold in her lap, and finally said, I agree, as long as Diana is okay with it. Diana was okay with the plan. Strangely, the idea of cutting a lock of hair from a silent girl in a dark room was appealing to Bertram. He gave Diana his ring and was told when to meet her in the dark room. At the appointed time, he came with a sharp knife, and as he cut off the lock of hair, he felt a sweet face touching his. 
He left the room feeling satisfied, like a famous man, and on his finger was a ring that the girl in the dark room had given him. That ring was given by the King of France to Helena. And now, Bertram was wearing that ring. The war was almost over, but one of the last chapters of it taught Bertram that the soldier who had called Helena his kikiwiki was far less brave than a wife. Paroles was a big talker and liked fancy clothes so much that the French officers decided to test his courage. But he turned out to be a coward. This is your loyal friend, said a French lord. To me, he's like a cat now, said Bertram, who didn't like house pets. Paroles was eventually released, but he felt like a coward after that and stopped bragging. Now, let's go back to France with Helena, who had spread a false story about her death. This news was brought to the Dowager Countess in Rousillon by Lafu, a lord who wanted to arrange a marriage between his daughter Magdalene and Bertram. The king was sad about Helena's supposed death, but thought the marriage idea was a good one for Bertram. He visited Rousillon to make it happen. Helena's great offense has ended, he said. Let Bertram come forward. Bertram, with a scar on his cheek, knelt in front of the king. He said that if he hadn't loved Lafa's daughter before marrying Helena, he would have appreciated his wife, whom he now loved when it was too late. Late love displeases the higher power, said the king. Forget Helena and give a ring to Magdalene. Bertram immediately gave a ring to Lafu, who said angrily, This is Helena's ring. No, it's not, argued Bertram. Then the king asked to see the ring and said, This is the ring I gave to Helena, and I told her to send it to me if she ever needed help. So you managed to get from her the very thing she needed the most. Bertram continued to deny that the ring belonged to Helena, but even his mother said it did. You're lying, the king exclaimed. Guards, seize him! As they were capturing him, Bertram wondered how the ring, which he thought Diana had given him, could look so much like Helena's. Just then, a gentleman came in, asking for permission to present a petition to the king. It was a petition signed by Diana Caplet, and it asked the king to order Bertram to marry her, the woman he had abandoned after winning her love. I'd rather pick a son-in-law at a fair than have Bertram now, Lafa remarked. Let the petitioner come in, the king said. Bertram found himself facing Diana and her mother. He denied any connection with Diana and spoke about her as if she were beneath him. But Diana asked him what kind of lady she must be if he gave her the same family ring he had given to Helena. Bertram felt like disappearing, but fate had one more gift for him. Helena entered. Is this real? the king wondered. Forgive me. Forgive me. Bertram cried. Helena held up his family ring and asked, Now that I have this, will you love me, Bertram? Forever, he exclaimed. The king praised Diana when she explained her actions and the truth about Bertram to him. She had done it for Helena's sake, to expose Bertram's unkindness not just to the king but to himself. His pride was now shattered, and it is believed that he became a better husband in the end.